Hello, friends. Welcome to Journey Through the Bible in One Year. My name is Taiko Badia, and I'll be leading you through the scriptures. Welcome to day three of week six. Today we'll be reading from the book of Exodus, chapter 26, verse 1 to 37. Exodus chapter 27, verse 1 to 21. The book of Matthew, chapter 25, verse 1 to 30. The book of Psalm, chapter 31, verse 1 to 8. And Proverbs, chapter 8, verse 1 to 11. Learning Objective. Students will be able to cite textual evidence to support an analysis of the tabernacle, the altar of burnt offering, the court of the tabernacle, and the care of the lampstand. Exodus chapter 26, verse 1 to 37, and it reads, Moreover, you shall make the tabernacle with ten curtains, of fine woven linen and blue, purple, and scarlet thread with artistic designs of cherubim, you should weave them. The length of each curtain shall be 28 cubits and the width of each curtain four cubits. And every one of the curtains shall have the same measurements. Five curtains shall be coupled to one another, and the other five curtains shall be coupled to one another. And you shall make loops of blue yarn on the edge of the curtain of the um, selvage of one set. And likewise, you shall do on the other edge of the outer of the other curtain of the second set. 50 loops you shall make in the one curtain, and fifty loops you shall make on the edge of the curtain that is on the end of the second set, that the loops may be clasped to one another. And you shall make fifty clasps of gold and couple the curtains together with the clasps so that it may be one tabernacle. You shall also make curtains of goat's hair to be a tent over the tabernacle. You shall make 11 curtains. The length of each curtain shall be 30 cubits and the width of each curtain, four cubits. And the 11th curtains shall have the same measurements. And you shall couple five curtains by themselves and six curtains by themselves. And you shall couple five curtains by themselves, and six curtains by themselves. And you shall double over the sixth curtain at the forefront of the tent. You shall make 50 loops on the edge of the curtain that is outermost in one set, and 50 loops on the edge of the curtain of the second set. And you shall make 50 bronze clasps. Put the clasps into the loops and couple the tent together, that it may be one. The remnant that remains of the curtains of the tent, the half curtains that remain shall hang over the back of the tabernacle and a cubit on one side and a cubit on the other side of what remains of the length of the curtains of the tent shall hang over the sides of the tabernacle on this side and on that side to cover it. You shall also make a covering of ram skins dyed red for the tent and a covering of badger skins above that. And for the tabernacle, you shall make the boards of archaea wood standing upright. 
Ten cubits shall be the length of a board, and a cubit and a half shall be the width of each board. Two tenion shall be on each board for binding one to another. Thus you shall make for all the boards of the tabernacle. And you shall make the boards of the tabernacle 20 boards for the south side. You shall make 40 sockets of silver under the 20 boards and two sockets under each of the boards for its two tenants. And for the second side of the tabernacle, the north side, there shall be 20 boards. And there are 40 sockets of silver, two sockets under each of the boards. For the far side of the tabernacle westward, you shall make six boards. And you shall also make two boards for the two back corners of the tabernacle. They shall be coupled together at the bottom, and they shall be coupled together at the top by one ring. Thus it shall be for both of them. They shall be for the two corners. So there shall be eight boards with their sockets of silver, 16 sockets, two sockets under each of the boards. And you shall make bars of archaea wood, five for the boards on one side of the tabernacle, five boards, five bars for the boards on the other side of the tabernacle, and five bars for the boards of the side of the tabernacle for the far side westward. The middle bar shall pass through the midst of the boards from end to end. You shall overlay the boards with gold. Make their rings of gold as holders of the bars and overlay the bars with gold. And you shall raise up the tabernacle according to its pattern, which you are shown, which you were shown on the mountain. Praise the Lord. You shall make a veil woven of blue, purple, scarlet thread, fine woven linen. It shall be woven with an artistic design of cherubim. You shall hang it upon the four pillars of archaea wood, overlaid with gold. Their hook shall be gold upon four sockets of silver. You shall hang the veil from the clasp. Then you shall bring the ark of the testimony in there, behind the veil. The veil shall be a divider for you between holy place and the most holy. You shall put the mercy seat upon the ark of the testimony in the most holy. You shall set the table outside the veil and the lampstand, across from the table on the side of the tabernacle towards the south. And you shall put the table on the north side. You shall make a screen for the door of the tabernacle woven of purple, blue, and scarlet thread and fine woven linen made by a weaver. You shall make for the screen five pillar of archaea wood and overlay them with gold. Their hooks shall be gold and they shall cast five sockets of bronze for them. Student learning objective. I can list the details of the tabernacle using the flow map. So here we are. God gave Moses specific instruction on how to build this tabernacle. And just look at the images and see how beautiful it is. They started off with the archaea wood. And then they, um, co they coated it with gold. And you see the different materials that they put layering on top. The scarlet thread, the fine linen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. So these are the that's the frame of the tabernacle. Has the archaea wood. 
And then it has the gold overlay. And look at the inside. Praise the Lord. There's a hanging veil in the inside. Right? That separates the Ark of the Testimony. <gasps> Praise the Lord. And the, and the holy place from the most holy. Exodus chapter 27, verse 1 to 27. And it reads, You shall make an altar of archaea wood, five cubits long and five <coughs> cubits wide. The altar shall be square and its height shall be three cubits. You shall make his horn on its four corners. His horn shall be one of piece, shall be of one piece with it. You shall overlay it with bronze. Also, you shall make his pants to receive its ashes, and his shovels, and his basin, and his forks, and his fire pans. You shall make all its utensils of bronze. You shall make a grate for it, a network of bronze. And on the network, you shall make four bronze rings at its four corners. You shall put it under the rim of the altar beneath, that the network, network may be midway up the altar. You shall make poles for the altar, poles of archaea wood, and overlay them with bronze. The poles shall be put in the rings, and the poles shall be on the two sides of the altar to bear it. You shall make it hollow with boards as it was shown you on the mountain. So shall they make it. Praise the Lord. Reading from verse nine. You shall also make the court of tabernacle. For the south side, there shall be hanging for the court made of fine woven linen, 100 cubit long for one side. And its 20 pillars and their 20 sockets shall be bronze. The hooks of the pillars and their bands shall be silver. Likewise, along the length of the north side, there shall be hangings 100 cubits long with his 20 pillars and their 20 sockets of bronze and the hooks of the pillars and their bands of silver. And along the width of the court on the west side shall be hangings of 50 cubits with their 10 pillars and their 10 sockets. The width of the court on the east side shall be 50 cubits. The hanging on one side of the gate shall be 15 cubits and three pillars and their three sockets. And on the other side shall be hanging of 15 cubits and on their pillars and their three sockets. The width of the court on the east side shall be 50 cubits. The hanging on one side of the gate shall be 15 cubits with their three pillars and their three sockets. And on the other side shall be hanging of 15 cubits and their three pillars and their three sockets. For the gate of the court there shall be a screen 20 cubits long, woven of blue, purple and the scarlet thread and fine woven linen made by a weaver. It shall have four pillars and four sockets. All the pillars around the court shall have bands of silver. The hook shall be of silver and their sockets of bronze. The length of the court shall be 100 cubits. The width 50 throughout and the height five cubits made of five fine woven linen and its sockets of bronze. All the utensils of the tabernacle for all its service, all its pegs and all the pegs of the court shall be of bronze. And you shall command the children of Israel that they bring you pure oil of pressed olives for the light 
to cause the lamp to burn continually. In the tabernacle of meeting, outside the veil, which is before the testimony, Aaron and his sons shall tend it from evening until morning before the Lord. It shall be a statue forever to their generation on behalf of the children of Israel. Student learning objective. I can list the details of the altar of tabernacle using the flow map. So we see the altar made out of uh, archaea wood, right? And then they were given instruction on how the horn should look like on the four corners of the altar. And then it was also, they were also given instruction for it to have like a, a layer of bronze all throughout the altar and how the poles are to be placed and inserted on the altar. And just look at the details. It's, it's extremely beautiful. Praise the Lord. Student learning objective. I can list the details of the court of the tabernacle using the flow map. So this is the perimeter surrounding the, the altar and the tabernacle, right? So you see the court and you see how it's made. You see um, the 20 pillars. You see their base. You see the details. Um, you see the part that is made out of bronze and then the silver is just very beautiful. You see the four pillars and the, and the base towards the, the end, right? And then the last picture, you can see the whole perimeter and it's, it's just beautiful. Praise the Lord. Using a plot diagram, let us summarize what we just read in the book of Exodus, chapter 26 and 27. Um, so I give a detail of what the instructions were that God gave Moses on how to build the tabernacle and how to build the court of the tabernacle um, and the instructions with regards to the lamp, right? Um but to summarize everything, the instruction was in this order. First, he gave him the instruction, um, the detailed instruction as to how the tabernacle would look or should look. And then the detailed instruction as to how the altar um, should look. And also how the, the lamp, the court of the tabernacle, excuse me, surrounding surrounding the altar, surrounding the tabernacle, and also how to care for the lampstand. Praise the Lord. Learning objective. Students will be able to cite textual evidence to support an analysis of the parable of the wise and foolish virgins and the parable of the talents in the New Testament. Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 30, and it reads, then the kingdom of heaven shall be likened to ten virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Now five of them were wise and five were foolish. Those who were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. But while the bridegroom was delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, a cry was heard, Behold, the bridegroom is coming. Go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said to the wise, Give us some of your oil, for our lamp is going out. But the wise answered, saying, No, lest there should not be enough for us and you. But go rather to those who sell and buy for yourselves. And while they were, went to buy, the bridegroom came, and those who were ready went in with him to the wedding, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came 
also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Assuredly, I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know neither the day nor the hour in which the Son of Man is coming. For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who received two gained two more also. But he who received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he had received five talents. Um, he So he had received five talents came and brought five five other talents saying, Lord, you delivered to me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of the Lord. He also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered me two talents. Look, I have gained two more talents besides him. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servants. You have been faithful over a few things, and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man, reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid. And I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gather where I have not scattered. You ought to have deposited my own with the bankers and at my coming i would have received back my own with interest so that the talent from him and give it to him who has so take the talent from him and give it to him who has 10 talents for to everyone who has more will be given and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he will have or he has will be taken away and cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Student learning objective. I can list the parable of the wise and foolish version using a flow map. So let us list the details as we know, right? So we hear Jesus is teaching about a parable called the wise and foolish version. Some versions uh, calls it, some translation calls, calls it the bridegroom uh, or the brides or the bride maid, I should say. Praise the Lord. So he talks about the kingdom of heaven is like 10 virgin or the bridemaids who took their lamp um, out to go and meet the groom. But when the foolish one took their lamps, they did not have an extra olive oil with them, right? But the wise had enough so that when they wait, because they didn't know when the bride, the groom will be coming, they still had enough oil in their lamp. So now when they made the announcement that the bridegroom was coming, uh, the bridegroom was there, 
um the the foolish the foolish virgin did not have enough oil and so let me see here I'm actually going ahead of myself so let me take my time so before they before they um realized that the bridegroom was here as they waited for the bridegroom all of them became drowsy and they all fell asleep right so then here we we hear the shouts uh, that the bridegroom is here. So then all of the virgins quickly got up and they started to trim their lambs. So what do you think happened next? Well, that's exactly what happened. If you guess this, then you're correct. Those that are wise were ready and those who were, the Bible says are foolish were not ready because they did not have enough oil in their lamp. So the ones that were the Bible considered fool, foolish asked the wise one if they would give them some of the oil so that um, they would have oil in their lamp. But the wise one said that, well, that, that doesn't make sense. And I'm paraphrasing because if we give you some of our oil, they probably won't be enough oil for the both of us and suggested that they go to the market and buy some more oil. So what do you think happened when they left to go and buy oil? Yep. The bridegroom came, went inside the wedding and the door was shut. So by the time the other virgin, the, the foolish virgin returned, um, and they were crying out, Lord, Lord, let us in. Um, he replied, I tell you the truth. I do not know you. So this speaks to the kingdom of heaven, right? We don't know the time um, in which Jesus will be returning. Remember we talked about it on the previous video that no one knows when Jesus is coming, the second coming of Jesus. Not even the angels in heaven know, only our God the Father. So we have to make sure we're ready. We have to stay in the word, stay in the prayer, stay in his presence, right? Use the talents that God has given us, praise the Lord, so that when he does come, we'll be ready and we won't be like the foolish virgins. Praise God. Learning objective. I can show the parable of the talents using a circle map. Likewise, the kingdom of heaven is like the parable of the talents. So we have um, the circle map and we're going to use a few illustrations. So we see um, a man gave right money to three workers or talents to three workers, right? To one, he gave how much? Five. The other, two. The last one, one. And then the one that had five, he was very wise and he multiplied his five, right? To the one that had two talents, they multiplied. He multiplied his um, talent, but the one that had one just buried it in the ground. He was afraid of his, uh, master. He felt, he felt that, oh, well, he usually reaps where he doesn't sow. Um, let me just, you know, bury this in the ground. So when he comes back for a harvest, I could just give him what he gave me, but that wasn't the instruction. He was given the talent so that he can multiply it. He was given the talent so that he can use it, um, and, and cause it to grow. And he didn't do that. So it was, he was rebuked. The talent was taken from him and given it to the one that had 10. So God is telling us that he has given each and every one of us gifts and talents, and he wants us to use it for his glory. So it doesn't matter how much you're given, use what you have. Rather than complaining, well, I only have one talent. I only have two, or I only have um, 0.5 talent. It doesn't matter what you have. Use what you have. Um, for the glory of God. And you see how God would take that and not only increase that, but also bless you in return. Praise the Lord. Using a plot diagram, let us summarize what we just read in the book of Matthew. Praise the Lord. So we see that Jesus is teaching about two parables, right? And the two parables he's teaching um, about is the parable of the ten virgin, and some version call it 
the 10 bride, bridesmaids. Um, it's same story. And then also he tells the parable of the, the talent where the boss, well, let's start from the beginning with the bride, with the 10 version. So just to recap, so we have 10 version that they're waiting for the bridegroom. So you have to understand in the biblical times, bride maids or virgins would wait for their groom, right? To bring his bride back to his, um, his father's house. And the exact time when this happened wasn't really known. It could have happened at night. It could have happened early in the morning. Um, but they, they, those waiting, they weren't um, given that information. So they're to wait. So for this reason, the bridesmaids would carry oil lamps, right? So God used that, or Jesus used that as an analogy about the kingdom of heaven. So Jesus was sharing the story about the 10 virgin or the 10 bridesmaids who was waiting for their bridegroom. We know half of them were wise and half weren't, right? Those who were wise, so the Bible considered wise, but those who were ready, they had enough oil. They anticipated he could come at any time, so they made sure they were prepared. Where the foolish one only packed enough oil um, that did not last. So when they all fell asleep, because eventually they did, they fell asleep waiting, they found out that, oh, the bridegroom is coming, but the foolish virgins weren't prepared. And by the time they went out to buy oil and came back, it was already too late. Um, similarly, the parable with the talent, the boss gave his workers money, right? And they were supposed to invest this money. One was given five, one was given two, one was given one. And the one that had five multiplied it, right? That was considered a great worker. The one that had two multiplied it, another great worker. Unfortunately, the one with one buried it, right? So he was rebuked and the, the money he was given was given to another. So it's not what you're giving, what you're given, right? Because sometimes we get stuck with what we have. And we like to compare ourselves with others, but I only have one talent. Instead of two, how come he has two? How come he has five? Or how come she has five? How come she has two? God, If God has given you one, he has given you the wisdom as well to grow that one. So it could be something great. So it could be something grand, right? So it could be something that it will give God glory, right? So use what God has given you. Use his gifts, use the gifts, use the talents, and put it to use, and God will bless you. Praise the Lord. And similarly, we have to stay ready um, because we don't know when Jesus is coming back. We don't know when the hour or the time, the second coming of, of Jesus is going to take place. So we have to make sure that we give our life to God and we're walking with him daily, that we are um, reading our Bible, that we are praying, that we are doing what God has called us to do, right? Um, we're living... Um, a righteous life, a holy life in Christ Jesus. And when we do that, right, we don't have to be worried because whenever he come, we'll be ready. Praise the Lord. Psalm 31, verse 1 to 8. And it reads, In you, O Lord, I put my trust. Let me never be ashamed. Deliver me in your righteousness. Bow down your ear to me. Deliver me speedily. Be my rock of refuge, a fortress of defense to save me. For you are my rock and my fortress. Therefore, for your name's sake, lead me and guide me. Pull me out of the net which they have secretly laid for me. For you are my strength into your hand i commit my spirit you have redeemed me O lord god of truth i have hated those who regard useless idols but i trust in the lord i will be glad and rejoice in your mercy for you have considered my trouble you have known 
my soul in adver in adversities and have not shut up uh, I have not shut me up into the hand of the enemy you have set my feet in a wide place proverb chapter 8 verse 1 to 11 and it reads does not wisdom cry out and understanding lift up her voice she takes her stand on the top of the high hill beside the way where the paths meet she cries out by the gates at the entry of the city at the entry of the doors to you O man i call and my voice is the sons of men O oh, you simple ones understand prudence and you fools be of a, an understanding heart listen for i will speak of excellent things and from the opening of my lips will come right things for my mouth will speak truth wickedness is an abomination to my lips all the words of my mouth are with are with righteousness nothing crooked or perverse is in them they are all plain to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold for wisdom is better than rubies praise the lord and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her my god learning objective i can compare the book of psalm 31 verse 1 to 8 and proverbs chapter 8 verse 1 to 11 using a double bubble map so in the light blue we have have the things that stand out in the book of psalm chapter 31 verse 1 to 8 and in the medium blue are the things that really stand out in the book of proverbs chapter 8 verse 1 to 11 and then in the purple are the similarities between the two chapters so we see in the book of psalm the author in this of this chapter is king david right and he's crying out to god right because he, he he's actually in in the form of a song obviously he's crying out to god it's a prayer um he's sharing how much he, he trusts god how much his trust is in the lord because god consistently rescues him so in this particular chapter, he's talking about how God rescued him, right? From his adversaries, from his enemies, and he's praising God for protecting him. So that's why you have the picture of, it looks like two EMS or EMT on stretchers. So it's, it's almost like, you know, that represents, you know, like God helping him in times of dire need, in times of trouble, in times where he was helpless, in times where he was defenseless, God has consistently been there for him and delivered him and helped him and, and um, saw him through. And he's constantly praising the Lord for protecting him, constantly praising the Lord for being there for him. Um, so we see that in this chapter. And in the book of Proverbs, this chapter is written by King Solomon, who's the son of King David, right? And again, we hear this time and time again. Um, this is a continuation of the lessons that King Solomon had been talking, um, sharing with his son in the previous chapter, warning against immorality, using a woman to represent immorality, warning against adultery, stepping outside of your um, covenant relationship, right? Your marriage. So now in conclusion to that, he's reminding them to listen to the wisdom. Again, just like he used the woman to represent immorality in this context, he's using a woman to represent wisdom. He said, listen to her, right? He's talking about wisdom, not the actual um, uh, woman, but he's referring to wisdom. So he said, listen to wisdom, right? You, he uses this on wisdom to represent woman. He said that is going to bless you. That wisdom is worth more than gold, is worth more than silver, is worth more than the finer things of this world, right? That hold on to wisdom, hold on to knowledge. So what are the similarities that we see in these two chapters, right? One is the wisdom of God saves. Ooh, that's a consistent thing that we see in these two chapters, but in different ways. So the wisdom of God saves. So with the King David, we see how the wisdom of God consistently saves him from the snare of his enemy time and time again. 
right? While he's running for his life. And then we see in with King Solomon in the book of Proverbs that the wisdom of God saves from immorality, right? Because there's a seductress, there's a, um, um, like a seductress, a trap sneer, um, it's like a, I'm trying to see how deep I can get it. Now, remember, how, okay, so we talked about what adultery is, right? And we talked about how God blesses marriage in previous videos, right? So stepping outside of that, listening to um, the voice of the enemy that will lead you astray is can lead to death, can lead to traps that will ensnare you, right? And we saw how even in the previous video, um, what happened to the young man that fell into the trap of the enemy that ended up in his house, right? It led to a destruction. So God is telling us through this chapter to listen to wisdom. It will save you from the sneer of the enemy. It will sneer, it will save you from the traps of the enemy that can lead to death. So wisdom saves in these two ways. That's what is showing in these two chapters. So with King David, it literally saved his life from those that are pursuing him. And with King Solomon, who's advising his son, his son it, saved, it will save his life if you listen to wisdom. Um, because God will bless his covenant relationship. And the sin of stepping out of it will not lead to their destruction or their demise or their death in Jesus name. And, um, in both chapter, it also speaks to how they are blessed, right? King David is saying he's blessed because, um, God protects him consistently. He's praising God for that. Right. And then King Solomon is saying that, listen, when you listen to wisdom, when you hold it deep in your heart, when you listen to destruction and you take heed to the knowledge, you too are blessed. So if you see any other reoccurring themes in these two chapters, feel free to write in a comment or you can write in your journal. Praise the Lord. So how do you feel about today's lesson and why? Is there something that you, that you learned today that surprised you, that made you feel happy, sad? Um, ex maybe you were excited to learn. Feel free to share, write in the comment or in the description below. Um, it's not really a surprise because I, I'm, I'm aware of it, but I guess when you go back and you read how detailed the tabernacle was and how the, the court was and how the um, altar is, it's just amazing that God is in the details. Woo, that is, that's a word for somebody. You know, sometimes we look at the grand scale game of thing and we're praying God for the big picture but we forget that God is in the details every aspect of that tabernacle the altar from the material to the design to the number of pegs and loops and how it's woven and the space and the measurement God gave specific instruction of every single detail what is made out of how it's shaped the distance so that tells me that God is in the details of our life or he desires to be in the details of our life. You know, don't just pray for the big thing. God, I want to achieve this. God, I want this big thing. Pray about the everyday things. Talk to him about your morning. Talk to him about your afternoon. Talk to him about your heart's desire. There's nothing that's not too small for God, you know, that he cannot do. And there's nothing that's too much. Um, insignificant that he, he doesn't want to hear. He wants to hear about every aspect of our life. You know, that's a, that's a blessing to hear. That's very encouraging. I pray that that encourage you too. So if there's anything else that really stood out to you in what we read today, feel free to share. And just the warning of, you know, we just have to stay ready. I was encouraged by that. You know, I, it was unfortunate. I was sad for the foolish version who missed out on the banquet, who missed out on the wedding because they weren't ready. Right? Because remember, all of them started off ready, but they weren't well prepared to go the distance. So I pray that we won't be among those who started off our race well, but did not finish it strong. We'll all finish our race strong in Jesus' name. We'll all um, be like the, 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 the worker that had five talents and multiplied it. Right? We'll all be like that talent in Jesus' name. 
Amen. Words have power. So let us take the words of God, personalize it, and speak it over our lives. Praise the Lord. I am loved, John 3, 16. I am protected, Isaiah 54, 17. I am forgiven, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9. I have eternal life, John chapter 3, verse 36. I do not lack, Philippians chapter 4, verse 19. I am called, Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 5. I am blessed, Psalm chapter 5, verse 12. I am fearfully and wonderfully made, Psalm 139, verse 14. It's going to be a blessed day. In Jesus' name, amen. Some reference and sources I used, um, freebibleimages.com. I used that for a lot of the pictures, all scriptures I got from biblegateway.com. I'm following the one-year Bible reading plan from Rose Publishing. And I, as always, I use Canva um, for the slides and also additional animations. We just completed week six, day three. Oh, we thank God for such a beautiful word today. I pray that the Lord spoke to you through his word and continues to speak through his words. I pray that your heart is open and willing to receive what the Lord is saying to you in this season. I pray that the Lord will bless you, will bless your loved one, bless your family and all that you do. And just remember that God loves you and God bless you. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye.